Welcome to Think Consulting. Today, I want to talk about Microsoft's journey into the world of AI as it ventures into various different disciplines. We'll examine the fine line between the hype that's surrounding Microsoft's AI endeavors and the reality of its performance. Join us on this exploration of how one of the major tech giants is navigating the ever-evolving landscape of AI. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Think Consulting. The place where we talk about the latest news and technology and trends that impact our lives. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of it, please don't forget to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our thought provoking content from Think Consulting. Today, we're going to break down this news and explore all the angles that come with it. Every time Microsoft launched a major AI feature, I couldn't help but feel more skeptical about the company's new direction. Now, why do you ask? Here's Microsoft, a notoriously conservative and slow-moving giant, reshaping its products around artificial intelligence. Not long after most people learned generative AI existed. The last time it made such a dramatic shift, we got Windows 8, remember that, a failed attempt at making its flagship OS, tablet and touchscreen friendly. That was a big debacle. Now, the company is bringing AI right into the heart of Windows, and I'm left wondering, is Microsoft jumping into arti artificial intelligence to actually make its own products better? Or is it just trying to stake a claim as an AI innovator and hope and pray that technology actually lives up to the hype? At this point, genuinely, it's hard for me to say which one of the two it is. Now, thinking about timing, Microsoft has a history of missed time product launches, whether that be the Zoom, the Web TV, the Windows Phone, Microsoft has shown it isn't so great at timing. Its products often either land too early to be useful, as in the case of the Web TV from the 90s, or arrive far too late to make an impact, like the genuinely great Zoom HD MP3 player in the late 2000s. Now, Zoom launched in 2006, years after iPod was a dominant MP3 market player. And by the time the refined Zoom HD debuted in 2009, it was already too late to compete with the iPod. Similarly, Microsoft's Windows Phone came out in 2010, just as the iPhone and Android phones had captured most of the smartphone market. Despite some innovative features like its Metro UI, Windows Phone peaked around 3% of market share globally in 2013 before they killed it in 2017. Now, Microsoft unveiled its AI-powered Bing chat earlier this year, hoping to position itself to ride the wave and hype generated by ChatGPT. ChatGPT, if you guys don't know, had reached over 100 million users just two months after launching, making it the fastest growing consumer application, period, according to UBS analysts. This timing was perfect for Microsoft to take advantage of all the excitement around AI chatbots and generative AI in general. What did they do? They put in $13 billion into OpenAI and got 49% stake in the process. Microsoft was eager to show off its new toy and stake a claim as an AI innovator. And for that, what did it do? It introduced Bing Chat in February of 2023, kicking off the year of AI. It was a strategic move to get out ahead of competitors like Google and others with a flashy new AI product that could tap into the, the chat GPT craze. Bing Chat makes a great first impression. It can provide answers to questions without having to click through pages of search results. The conversational interface feels like chatting with a real assistant, but this is still early stage AI. And as you guys might have known, Bing Chat's friendly facade has many flaws behind it. It often makes errors, misunderstands questions, and suffers from opaque processing and frequent crashes during longer conversations. Now, Copilot is coming to other products as well within the Microsoft uh, uh, environment. Microsoft began integrating Copilot into its products soon after the Bing chat launch. The Copilot came to Microsoft Edge first, where it was started to summarize web pages that you're viewing. It's also into Microsoft 365 apps like Word, PowerPoint, Excel, etc., to kind of slice and dice the data or to help you with the presentations. But the biggest rollout was the Windows 11 rollout. After months of previewing builds, Copilot officially arrived in Windows 11 as a part of the 2022 update. 
with it. Windows 11 users can simply type or speak questions to get direct answers without having to open a web browser. For example, you can ask it simple questions. How do I turn on dark mode? And Copilot will walk you through the steps to enable night mode. Later in 2022, Microsoft surprised some people by announcing it was bringing Copilot to Windows 10 as well. With Windows installations running about 69% on Windows 10 versus 26% by Windows 11, that made sense. By targeting both platforms, the number of people that could potentially be exposed to the technology is over a billion people. Now, during my testing of Copilot, I found that its capabilities just don't live up to the hype. Despite all the polished demos, I feel Copilot often makes errors, doesn't fully understand my questions, and has a tendency to crash unexpectedly. Now, Copilot, it makes a first great impression by quickly delivering answers. I feel it misunderstands some questions entirely. I've had many disappointing conversations with the AI assistant when asking for product recommendations or image analysis. It confidently provides the answers, but they are wrong or irrelevant. Microsoft, on the other hand, appears to actually take a two-prong approach. It appears to show a bit of humility by acknowledging that this technology is not perfect. On the Bing chat interface, it has a huge disclaimer emblazoned at the top of the chat itself that this is an AI prone to make mistakes and to share feedback. That way, Microsoft can use that feedback to make the tool better. Now, while they are touting the Copilot's ability to write essays and hold conversations, but that disclaimer kind of, you know, lets Microsoft get away with errors as the technology evolves. And I feel this is a clever strategy by Microsoft. They get to have their cake and eat it too, right? Most about powerful capabilities of their AI on one hand, but also have a disclaimer that gives them an easy AI out when the AI messes up, which I feel it inevitably will because this is early days of the AI. It's an admission that the technology is not yet bulletproof, but a way for them to buy more time as they improve it. Microsoft knows that for Copilot and their other AI tools to be successful, they need to build user trust, which ultimately comes down to users testing the products themselves and then adopting those products to their lifestyle. Now, I believe that there will be organic growth in adoption of these technologies over time as people see the value of these technologies firsthand once they're developed. I also feel that users will understand Copilot won't be perfect yet, especially in the early stages. But big tech needs to own that, be transparent about technology still being in a growth phase, and the company has a responsibility to let people know that this is an ongoing learning process. Ideally, that understanding will lead to more patience and empathy from users. Now, Microsoft seems to be taking small steps towards the transparency already. The warning atop the Bing chat acknowledges surprises and mistakes are likely. While partly just managing expectations, it also shows some humility in admitting that the tech is still rough around the edges. Now, I've been using Microsoft's AI solutions since Bing Chat launched earlier this year. And while it's helpful for simple tasks like creating of tables and whatnot, I feel that as long as it comes to interactive usage, it is severely lacking in capabilities. It is buggy, it is error prone, it does not understand uh, complex questions, and also it is prone to crash. Now, with that being said, I think it's a great step in the right direction, but that technology needs to improve significantly for users to be able to adopt that technology to the way we'd like it to be. I've had some disappointing conversations with Bing, like I was saying earlier. For example, I asked if it was a good time to buy a Nintendo Switch and when would it be? After a lot of back and forth, I felt that it was just unable to answer questions. I also had a question about images. It tried to do it, but you know, the uh, the names were wrong. So a Google search of that image got me an answer right away, but uh, a similar image on the chat interface took about five seconds and still got the make and the manufacturer's name wrong. So that's kind of, you know, taken with a pinch of salt. Although Google has its own issues, 
their their search algorithm i feel is much better microsoft introduced github copilot in november 2021 providing some insight into how users can learn to work with ai tools like copilot github is designed to serve as an aid for experienced programmers it looks for potential issues in code and can generate simple code on its own according to developers that i've dealt with github copilot can be useful for coders as long as expectations are properly managed there's another thing that needs to be uh, taken note of microsoft's close relationship with open ai could actually hurt the company and put it in a precarious position If you're not familiar there was a lot of drama with Sam Altman from OpenAI who was fired by the board then was forced to ha- get hired by the board again and the board was fired later on that puts the entire 13 billion investment of Microsoft at risk because OpenAI is dealing with a lot of these issues leadership issues and if OpenAI fails to deliver on its promises or goes through another period of chaos like what we saw a few months ago Microsoft will find its future vision for Windows Office and other products in severe jeopardy The company is tying itself very closely to the success of a young, unproven startup. While there is potential for technologies like ChatGPT and DALL-E and whatnot, it's still largely untested over the long term. And if OpenAI cannot achieve stable leadership and consistent innovation, that would put Microsoft's AI capabilities in the doubt. And relying heavily on OpenAI is a risk. and and that's the bet microsoft has taken if openai fails to live up to the expectations microsoft might have to scramble to incorporate alternative ai solutions into its stack now for a company that's trying to rebuild customer trust and loyalty hitching its entire wagon to such an unpredictable partner could easily backfire microsoft will need to maintain control over its own ai destiny despite its collaboration with openai so there you have it folks Thank you for joining me today at Think Consulting for this deep dive into Microsoft journey into this evolving AI space. I hope that this uh information provided gave you some valuable insights into the challenges and opportunities Microsoft faces in the realm of artificial intelligence. What do you think about this development? Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Now please don't forget to like, subscribe and share your thoughts in the comment section below. Stay informed. Stay inquisitive, stay critical, and continue to explore the fascinating intersection of AI and uh, technology. And I hope to see you in the next video.